Whether having oysters Rockefeller or eating oysters raw in the half shell at home, you could save a little time and get a fresher oyster if you shuck them on your own. When I worked in a seafood restaurant in New York City, I'd shuck thousands of these. So I want to give you some tips so you could do it at home, so you could have the freshest oyster possible and save yourself a little money while doing it. Uh, we're going to start with the anatomy of an oyster. This is an oyster. <laughs> you have a rounded shell, which is on the bottom. That's the cup that holds the, the fleshiest part of the oyster and its liquor. And then on top, you have the flat shell, which is held closed to the other shell by two abductor muscles. The first thing you want to do when picking out an oyster is smell them. This one smells nice and briny, like the ocean, uh, which is good. Uh, if it was bad, you would smell kind of a rotten fish smell that's been sitting around for a really long time. It's not pleasant. You would definitely know it was a bad oyster. The next thing you want to do is tap it and hear that nice rich sound. If it was dead, the oyster would sound hollow, almost like castanets. Also, you'll notice if an oyster is dead or even if it's just resting, sometimes these two shells will open. So its mouth will open a bit. If you tap on it and it closes tight shut, that oyster's safe to eat. If it just kind of sits there with its mouth open, it's probably dead and you don't want to risk it. The first thing you want to do when you get home is grub off as much sand and dirt as you possibly can because this is going to be your vessel for eating it, especially if you're eating it on the half shell. You don't want to get a mouthful of sand. It's not pleasant. Next thing you need to do is get yourself a nice dish towel. Well, maybe not too nice. You don't want to damage it. Just to offer yourself some support for when you actually shuck the oyster. You're going to be shucking on the round side. So if you notice, if you put it on a hard surface, it rocks back and forth. You need more stability than that. So you want to place it on a towel where you get a little more support and partially cover it using this half of the towel as protection for your hand when you're shucking the oyster. This is an sh oyster shucking knife. It's uh, long and pointy. It's not sharp. It is not sharp in the slightest. You could run your fingers along it as much as you want and you won't get cut, but it is quite pointy. So you don't want to slip off the oyster and give yourself a jab. You'll notice on the back, the back side of the oyster, the, the narrower side of the oyster, that's where you'll find the hinge. You're going to want to place the towel over the oyster and rock it a little forward so that the hinge is facing up. You then are going to take the pointy side of your knife, slip it into the hinge, and give it a good little wiggle and a push just so that you know it's in there. And then you're going to turn it and you're going to feel or hear, you didn't hear that one, it wasn't too loud, but you'll feel a pop in the oyster and you'll feel that the oyster releases itself. You're going to then want to wiggle your knife in again and running it along the top shell, you want to release that top abductor muscle. You're going to run your knife straight through, and you'll see the top shell just pull right off. And there's that one abductor muscle that we just released. You'll then want to grab the, rest, the, the other side of the oyster, holding it gently so that you don't lose any of the liquor, all that juice in there that's called oyster liquor. And then you're going to want to run your knife underneath the bottom to release that second abductor muscle. Now that you've shucked your oysters, you could place them on a nice ice lined platter with some lemon wedges, some shallot vinegar, otherwise known as mignonette sauce, or some nice spicy cocktail sauce. Or, if you're like me, you'll just take them au naturel.